Top of the morning everyone and as I mentioned this past week guys I'll be working on a couple of videos that are focusing specifically on uh, uplifting different individuals and sharing some of my experiences and remember guys these are my views they're not linked to any company they are not uh, my employer's views or any other person's views these are the views I'm also not an immigration lawyer based on what I'm about to share with you guys so I'm not an immigration lawyer so please do not use this as a way of saying Tilly told me this is how it's gonna work so then you leave it out there one of the reasons why I thought I should actually put this out there was because I've had quite a number of people reach out to me to say hey listen um, we're looking at immigrating help us understand what we need to do and and the conversations that I've had with them sometimes you'll find that they haven't even done the first steps of understanding some of these things and I think before you start reaching out to an immigration lawyer or you start reaching out to anybody there's a few basic things that you can actually do yourself and this video is trying to to just give you a, a, a guideline of what you need to actually think about before you start doing any of those things or before you start sending messages to people to say they should help you with the immigration process so like I said not the views of my employer and I'm not trying to tell people to immigrate I'm just trying to share what I know so far because a lot of people have actually asked uh, for me to share some of this information so here we go the first thing that you should actually do before anything else to understand why you'd like to immigrate uh, because a lot of people always say you know I want to immigrate I want to move over you know I want to come to Switzerland or I want to go to Canada or I want to go to Australia why do you want to move overseas? And and for a lot of people, it, it might be basic. Uh, it might be as basic as different opportunities, different jobs. Uh, like there's so many reasons why so many people would like to immigrate. And that's one of the nice things about that. But but please make sure that you first answer that uh, for yourself first. Because it might, at face value, it might look like it's a simple thing. Uh, but some of the things that we could look at is, do you even have the means to be able to do that, those few steps of immigration? Now, for a lot of people, it could be, I want to immigrate because warm clim climate. You know, some people want to move to South Africa because warm. Um, I mean, they get, South Africa gets the sun um, almost like 300 days in a year. Uh, and in the times when it's actually not sunny, it's not as cold as it is here in Europe. And some of the people want to move here for different things. It could be uh, the lower cost of living in some of the areas, or they might be moving uh, to Europe because of either safety or schooling or whatever reasons or ancestral connections and they want to connect with some of their friends um, and also the other things that you need to uh, actually think about is if you're thinking about retiring will the location that you want to retire and suit you uh, is this the right place to actually move to because if you don't think about those things you could be trying to retire to a company where I'm into mean, a country where it's too cold your arthritis is not necessarily gonna work out I'm not saying people have got arthritis I'm just just spitballing here so that you understand that you know answering the question as to why you want to immigrate uh, becomes the first basic things that you need to answer for yourself first before anything else now and once you've actually gotten that out of the way it's about now picking up on the practical things to say okay cool now what do i know about the place that i want to go to and these are some of the top 10 things that i think you need to think about before you make the move wherever you're gonna go top 10 things this is what you need to think about once again, guys, if, the, if this is the kind of videos that you guys are looking at and you like what you've seen or you've liked what you've heard so far, don't forget to subscribe and make sure that you share with some of your friends um, and it might help somebody. Now, number one is decide on the country, okay? Uh, and deciding on the country that you want to move to requires a few things. Number one is what's the field of work, um, the scarcity of the skill that you're looking at. So in some of the countries, you'll find that you know, it's a lot easier to get visas because of the field of work that you're already in, whether it's IT or engineering or some of these things. So the field of work is very important. Your age, your previous studies, your language proficiency, because like, for example, in countries like Switzerland, uh, as well as Germany, being able to speak certain languages become a, a requirement for you to actually apply for that visa. So, for example, in Switzerland, they've got four different languages. We've got Romance, Italian, French. Uh, as well as German, so those are the, the different languages. Germany also requires you to have a, I think it's an A2 level, which is the second level um, uh, of German, so you need to be able to speak some of the language. So those are some of the things that you need to think about. Ancestry on a few others. So those are some of the things that before you do anything, that's number one that you need to think about. Still under number one, each country has its own immigration rules, guys. So as I said, I'm not an immigration lawyer, so I'm not going to focus on a specific company because 
I don't know the, I'm in a specific country because the moment I start doing that, I start getting messages about that country. I'm looking at the different countries and, and from what I've known, I've likely been able to work for um, four or five different countries uh, in the past. And I know some of the basic requirements in those and that's why I'm going to share some of these things. Because each country has its own immigration rules, it is very, very important that before you start reaching out to somebody to say, hey, I'd like to immigrate to Canada or I'd like to immigrate uh, to Nigeria or I'd like to immigrate to this place, you first go to the labor, I mean, the home affairs page for that particular country to understand what are the requirements. Just, that's the basic thing. Just go to www.whatever the country is called, .org or .com, .de, .royal. Find out what are the basic requirements and the rules for actually being able for you to actually qualify. Because some of the countries, for example, like Australia, use a point system. Now, the point system, for example, uh, focuses on things like, do you have a degree from uh, one of the universities in that area? What's your age? Uh, ancestry co uh, connections? So many different things. So some of the countries actually have a point system. And the nice thing about some of the, like for example, Australia, you can actually go score yourself to see if you actually do qualify as a basic thing before you start the steps. The, on the website, they've got that. You can actually click on the scoring thing to check whether you qualify for some of those things. You need to also check, uh, for example, if the country supports employer visa sponsorships because some of the countries make it very difficult for the employers to actually do a visa sponsorship. Uh, or some of the countries, the visa sponsorship for from the different companies are very limited. So, so you find that a lot of companies don't want to do that. So you might need to start finding other avenues. Number two, living arrangements. Now, the cost of accommodation for a few of these different countries um, is very, very high. So you need to make sure that before you say, I'm going to move to England or I'm going to move to this place, you figure out, am I moving there already with a job? If I'm not moving there with a job and I've got some of my savings, can they take me through to a couple of months? And can they take me through a couple of months? Bas basically might mean that once you get your visa, you start applying for the jobs as soon as possible because you would like to at least be able to start as soon as you are already in the country. Now, in some cases, you might spend six months without actually having accommodation. And as you've seen in my previous uh, videos for you to move to Switzerland and you're looking at, uh, for example, uh, accommodation here, it's not very cheap, uh, especially when you look at the currency conversions. Uh, it becomes extremely expensive for uh, some of the people that come from countries where the currency is a bit lower than the dollar or uh, the Swiss franc or the pound or whichever one or the euro. So always think about the living arrangements. You know, can, do you have enough money to cover your accommodation for a couple of months? The third thing that you need to worry about is the language barrier or the language. Um, what language does the country speak? Uh, for example, in the Netherlands, they speak Dutch, uh, Belgium, they speak other languages. Switzerland, we speak, as I mentioned, the four languages, Germany, German, uh, Austria speaks German. And so you need to sometimes figure out what languages that the country speak. Like, for example, Canada, it's mostly English. And if you do speak French, it also works in certain areas within Canada. So that might actually also be good. So your language proficiency is very, very important. Uh, for example, in Australia, depending on uh, the country you come from, you need a TOEFL or an IELTS exam. Uh, which is an English proficiency exam that you need to actually do. Uh, Germany needs German, uh, Switzerland needs uh, German, Italian, Romance, or even French. So, so each country has got a specific language proficiency requirement and you need to make sure that you meet those before you even go anywhere else. The fourth thing is culture. Now, how easy is it to integrate in that particular society? And for example, if you look at language, if language is going to be a problem, integration is also going to be sometimes very difficult. So some of the things that you need to think about is, is exactly that to say the cultural difference could be the reasons why in the first six months or the first year, somebody actually struggles to integrate in that particular country. So that's why it's very, very important to think about those things before you start actually reaching out to an immigration lawyer. The fifth thing that you need to worry about or that you need to think about is, are you moving to that country based on studies, working, or are you actually going to start your own business there? Because each one of these also has got a different uh, visa requirements. Uh, your, your purpose of studying, I mean, your purpose of your move, for example, where is it for studying? Um, it, it's very, very important because if it's for studying, is the university sponsoring you or are you one of the road scholars that have got a, a visa sponsorship and can you be able to actually sustain yourself in those things? If it's for work, is it uh, self-sponsored or are you actually going there because 
you're being sponsored by the company uh, and that's also very important because normally if it's a company sponsored uh, move you'll find that the company does everything for you so they'll just ask you for all the other documents and then you basically just submit with that and they also help in some of the cases with the integration in that particular company uh, or in that particular country to make sure that you integrate easily and then if you're actually going to start a business um, you know you need to also understand you know if you have the funds to be able to start that kind of business and it's going to be a company that will be able to employ a few individuals because some cases you can actually uh, be able to move to certain countries based on how much money you've got to start a business because then you'll employ the local um, community in your kind of business the sixth reason that you need to think about guys is medical very very important uh, one of the things that I know is in most countries, um, um, you need to do medical checks before you actually go there. Now, are you going to need chronic medication? How expensive is it? Do you have the health insurance to be able to cover these things? Those are some of the things that you need to actually worry about because if you don't have some of these things, that could also make your integration into that country very, very difficult. And that's why I always say, think about these things first before you already start reaching out to the immigration lawyer because... Some of them will say, okay, cool, come on board. Um, you pay them five to 10,000 US dollars and at the end of the day, your visa gets rejected and they knew that upfront and they don't actually end up giving you what you're looking for. So that's why understanding what you've got upfront is very, very important to make sure that you at least are able to get that visa when the time comes. The seventh thing is uh, understanding about safety measures, guys. Is the country safe that you're moving to? Um, I know a lot of people start thinking about, yeah, I want to move to this country uh, because it's very safe. Each country is safe in its own way. It sometimes depends on where you live. Uh, you could live in, you could move to one of the countries that you think is the safest only to live in the wrong neighborhood. And unfortunately, that might not be the right thing. So think about safety as well. Uh, there's no point in moving to a place that's not necessarily safe uh, with the assumption that you're moving there because of safety. Number eight is... Uh, it helps again once again with the uh, with the integration which is friends and family uh, for a lot of people for example moving to a different country is very difficult once once again so i moved here in uh september of 2020 and what was very very easy for me was the fact that uh, my wife already had family here so it was a lot easier for me to start integrating in the country so i didn't feel too removed from family even though I still do have my family back in Africa, it, it's sometimes very, very um, needed that there is that connection between yourself and family. Do you have friends in that country? And I'm lucky that I do have a couple of friends here as well. So I'm able to reach out to them and, and have conversations about what's happening back home. So those are some of the things that you need to actually think about. You know, how easy is it going to be uh, for you to integrate in that particular place? And once again, it's about... Um, this is a very subjective matter because for some people they can't live a week without uh, seeing their parents and, and if that's the case it's going to be very difficult if you're moving overseas and you're not able to see your family every day number nine guys is financial and financial means do you have the money for the flights do you have the money for relocation costs and relocation costs could be household goods it could be medical it could be transportation accommodation and a few other things so it could be just about anything else uh, do you have the, the funds to survive in that particular country for a couple of months? Why are you still looking for the opportunities or why are you looking for the jobs? Those are the things that for me are extremely important because if you do not have the funds, if for example, you cannot say to me that you've got at least about, let's say about 15,000 US dollars at high ballpark, you'll find that for somebody that's relocating, if you're going to relocate with your household goods, you're looking at about maybe between three and five thousand US dollars for just to move your household goods. That's the cheapest one that you can get. It can go up to about ten thousand dollars. After that you're looking at about maybe a thousand five hundred to about uh, two thousand uh, US dollars for accommodation per month that you're looking at. And then you start also thinking about the food, you start thinking about these things. So think about a situation where if you're moving to let's say Canada, you will be able to survive for let's say about five to six months with whatever you've got in five to six months you're looking about maybe about 15 or 16 thousand uh us dollars or canadian dollars to be able to survive there so it's very very important to actually check if you even have the funds to be able to start living in that country that is only based on if you're not moving there because of a job 
or you're not moving there because you actually got a, a sponsorship to be able to move to that country. So it's very, very important that you answer these things to yourself to say, do I have the funds to be able to start whatever I would like to start in that particular country? And if I do not have the funds, maybe this might not be the right time to actually do that. Or maybe this might not be the right time to start reaching out to uh, a relocation uh, lawyer because also that is going to be more costs and they cost different amounts of money uh, depending on the country that, that you're looking at. Lastly, every country is different. So what applies to Switzerland will not always apply to Dubai. It will not always apply to Germany. It will never always apply to any one of the countries. So before you reach out to anybody about relocation and immigration or trying to find any opportunity to go anywhere else outside of the country that you're living in, Always think about some of these things because they are very, very important. And normally this applies to a lot of people that would come from uh, what they would call third country nationals. So for example, somebody relocating from uh, Germany to Switzerland, that's a very easy process. Somebody relocating from uh, Italy to Switzerland, that's a very easy process. Somebody relocating from Europe to another European country is a lot easier. Somebody relocating from Africa to Europe is not an easy process and those are some of the things you need to worry about somebody relocating outside of any european countries into any other country that is within europe you need to think about these top 10 things that you need to think about guys because for me those are the things that you need to worry about before you do anything else so number one decide on the country two living arrangements three language barrier four culture five study is it studying is it working or is it starting a business number six medical number seven safety number eight friends and family number nine financial and lastly remember that some of these things only apply depending on the country that you move from not necessarily a blueprint for every single country once again top of the morning and thank you so much for taking time to watch this video if you are here at the end please don't forget to share with your friends and let's hear your comments for some of you guys that have actually recently relocated.